What up, Tucson, Arizona? This is episode uh, 244. 244. Anyways, uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Uh, it's January the 14th, uh, 2011. Hopefully, your New Year's was a great one. Hopefully, your holiday season was a great one with Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, I know I had a great time. Hopefully, you did too. And then since it's January, and this is the new Call Me Crazy Theory show, uh, I'm going to do something different. Uh, this is a poem written by a guy named John Updike, and the name of the poem is called January. The days are short, the sun a spark, huge thin between the dark and dark. Fat snowy footsteps track the floor. And park us pile up near the door. The river is a frozen place held to beneath the tree black lace. The sky is low, the wind is gray, the radiator purrs all day. And I just wanted to say that uh, poem a tribute to uh, John of Dyke because it's January. And anyways, uh, January, so a couple of days ago, January, it was uh, our, our infamous friend's birthday, Rob 2D2, up in Chicago, Idaho area, up in the, the tri-state area. But anyways, uh, happy birthday, Robert Gonzalez, um, RPG, uh, it's been a while, it was great that you called on uh, Christmas Day, and it's great to know that your little boy, Jimi Hendrix, is doing great. Anyways, and uh, and this is a, a, the first show of the year 2011, and it hasn't been a week yet. It's, it'll, it'll be as of tomorrow morning, a week. But anyways, almost a week ago, uh, some deranged crazy man went on a, a rampage and killed uh, uh, quite a number of people at a Safeway here in town, which we all know about. But anyway, the point is I want to talk about that the fact that the gunman uh, was allowed to, uh, not allowed, but that he was able to pull off something so, what's the word I'm looking for, so uh, premeditated and evil, I mean, it, it, it occurred to me that, uh, that um, as the day war went on, and more word leaked out, it turned out that he was a student at uh, Pima College, I guess. And anyways, several of the students had remarked that uh, he acted very strange, uh, he talked to himself, and then also to his parents, I guess. Uh, I'm, not, I, I'm, not, I'm not putting no blame uh, on anybody except the gunman, but it, it just seems to me that uh, who was ever uh, the people in the gunman's life prior to the shooting, uh, somewhere along the line, uh, uh, his parents failed him. Uh, uh, apparently, the school where he was going to, where he went to school, uh, knew the sign. I guess uh, there have been some disturbances where the police department had a, uh, had a report uh, to the campus of an incident concerning him, and I'm not too sure what they were, were but the point is that uh, he was building up a history prior to the shooting. And then also, too, it seemed like as a whole, everybody uh, failed him in terms of maybe, we don't know, maybe he has a history of mental health. Uh, uh, you know, the reason is that he snapped. Pretty much that most people agree that uh, it was uh, a very uh, terrible and horrible thing to do. And my heart goes out to all those people uh, who suffered losses, especially Christina Green, uh, God bless her. Uh, it's such a sad uh, day today. Uh, was a, uh, this, this morning was a funeral, but it was such a sad thing. Uh, her life was just getting started. But anyway, the more we learn about the, the, the killer, it gets a sad fact that uh, it's just a crazy deranged man. And uh, when the trial comes, ooh, 
God knows when that's going to happen, but that's going to be a media circus if there is going to be one. God knows there is uh, a lot of news people here in town. And uh, and I, I, oh, a couple of days ago, I was by the, uh, I drove by, by the uh, Gifford's uh, main headquarters on her uh, offices right there on Pima and uh, Swan, I believe. But anyway, there was a memorial there, and it's good to know that she might be able to pull through. But my heart heart goes out to all those people who, who suffer losses, including the people who survived. Uh, bad, bad, horrible thing. Uh, I guess it's guess it's guess a a shame that it had to be such an event to bring such national media exposure back. Not to Tucson, because bad enough Arizona is in the news for the wrong reason. We all know that. We all know that Arizona in the news for the wrong reason just because of what Jan Brewer and her stupid immigration bill and all that. And then, and not only that, uh, people think, people around the country think that, uh, you know, work at the Calberg, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and, you know, and the shooting doesn't help the image at all. So, uh, the gunman, uh, you're not even worthy enough to say his name. Uh, Apparently, you look like a monster. Uh, I saw your mugshot the other day, and I was horr horrified. And it's funny, so many other, I know so many people who, who tell me uh, there's so many different reasons why he, he did it. Uh, one, of the main, one of the main reasons why he did it is uh, that he was crazy. And then I heard some other, uh, other people tell me, too, that they, they truly believe that he was possessed by something very evil, something very demonic. Uh, he was possessed by an evil demonic spirit and and they told him to go do that and all that. And you know what I think is just one of those things where like I said before everything and everybody in this guy's young man's life failed him. You know the public education system failed him, his parents failed him, everybody failed him. Uh, if we had any friends we don't know if he did or not. His friends failed him. Uh, now his young, his life is thrown away. Not including the, the six people he killed and the 13 people that he shot. But his life is uh, thrown away also. And uh, the battery is dying. So I'll be back. Red light. Red light. Sorry about that. The battery got replaced. But anyways, uh, back to the subject about that uh, shooting, mass shooting. Uh, and also too, that was great to see President Barack Obama come on down on Wednesday. Didn't get, didn't get able to uh, get inside the McHale Center uh, to see that. Even though I did see, I was able to see on TV eventually. But I did see it uh, on TV. A very eloquent speech, um, uh, very heartfelt, uh, one of the better speeches he's ever done, and uh, and it was good to know that uh, he brought this little sense of uh, perfect unity for all of us to feel at the moment because, uh, you know, we don't know why the human condition uh, is the way it is. You know, there no no one's gonna know why uh, the gunman did what he did uh, until we might never know why. Maybe he might be declared insane and he'd be put away for life, and we'll never know why. And he'll go down to the history books, you know. But uh, like my friend and Marty has said too, uh, his demo uh, was very sloppy and. He didn't take out the person that he was supposed to take out, even though I don't mean to say that. But uh, the, the only way that he was able to uh, not continue the shooting rampage was that when he had stopped to reload, he got tackled. And we all know who did that. But uh, what a horrific day that was. And uh, I remember being at home on, on uh, Saturday morning uh, hearing that. And... Uh, it gets uh, what a way to start 2011 for them and 
but uh, God bless all of them, and uh, I I hope uh, we, they can all pull through, and hopefully, uh, you heard it first, hopefully Gab Gab Gabrielle Gifford will pull through, and then she'll do a Barbara Walter, or she'll do an Oprah Winfrey interview. So God bless all of them. But anyway, here's another poem I found. Uh, I thought I would share with you guys. I thought it was very cool. Uh, it is called, My Life Has Been the Poem I Would Have Writ. My life has been the poem I would have writ, but I could not both live and utter it. And that was written by, uh, oh, you don't know him, uh, Henry David Thoreau. Just kidding. And then, another thing I wanted to tell you guys about was the last thing I'm going to talk about. Okay, here. Uh, here's a, a, a here's the last, uh, my last thing I'm going to do before I sign off. Anyways, uh, Here's a poem by one of my favorite writers. Uh, I've been, I first got turned on to him back when I was maybe eight or nine years old. And every summer when I was a kid, me and my brother were sent to Mexico to go spend our summer vacation with our grandparents up there. And uh, on the last day of school, it will be getting ready and then we'll get shipped off. So me and my brother, we will spend three months out in, uh, out in Uda Sonora and anyways uh, out there they had a comic book also but they were all, uh, all Spanish but anyway they had these uh, graphic novels in Spanish of Edgar Allan Poe and I was eight or nine years old when I had first cross, came across them and anyway one of the first uh, stories I ever read by Edgar Allan Poe was the tale, tale of Heart and it was in the graphic uh, graphic novel form in Spanish and I know how to read both languages but anyway uh, I read that as a kid and it freaked me out so much that I could not sleep like for two or three weeks because I kept on thinking I could hear the beating of the old man's heart underneath my bed but uh but that's a great story but anyways I uh there's a, a poem that he wrote that I, I absolutely absolutely adore I know it's morbid but anyway Edgar Allan Poe and this poem is called Alone. Well, anyway, uh, this is a poem called Alone by a ground poem. From childhood's hour I have not been, as others were I have not seen, as others saw I could not bring, my passion from a common screen. From the same source I have not taken, my sorrow I could not awaken. My heart to joy at the same tone, and all I loved, I loved alone. Then in my childhood, in the dawn of a most stormy life, was drawn from every depth of good and ill, the mystery which bind me still, from the torrent or the fountain, from the red cliff of the mountain, from the sun that round me rolled in an autumn tint of gold, from the lightning in the sky, as it passed me flying by, from the thunder and the storm, and the cloud that took the form, when the rest of heaven was blue, of a demon in my view.